Okay, next up, we have Krakatoa Resources, ASX code KTA, and they have a market cap of around 17 million. Krakatoa is committed to acquiring and developing high value and critical, min- critical metals projects. Presenting for the company today is Colin Locke, Executive Chairman. Colin, welcome back. Please take it away. First up, I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome the tsunamis of new shareholders that are joining us on the Krakatoa Share Registry. Uh, Welcome to the family. And uh, next slide, please. Uh, Speed reading again. So we have two main, we we have two main uh, projects. Uh, one being Mount Clare, where we've already delineated a 101 million ton clay hosted rare earth resource of about 840 ppm trios. Uh, out of that, 25% to 30% are uh, payables uh, in the uh, that are used to uh, uh, for magnet ingredients. And we have uh, King Tamba is the second major project where uh, we've already delineated a 5 million ton rubidium resource. And uh, rubidium, just by the way, last time I looked, is trading at over a uh, thousand US per per uh, kilo. Um, uh, King Tamba is a uh, multi-critical uh, metals uh, uh, project with um, a, a plethora of uh, uh, criticals and high-value metals. And we'll, we'll we'll spend more time on that as we go. Next slide, please. Uh, we can skip that. We've covered that in the last chat. Um, the corporate overview, we've got 434 million shares on issue, uh, market cap of around 17 million, um, a, a very uh, co- competent and cohesive board, and a um, we've got an inter- enterprise value, obviously, of about around about uh, 14, just under 15 million cash in cash on hand uh, based on uh, last uh, quarter leaves, 2.5 mil. Uh, next slide, please. So what we're leading up to here is mainly the uh, King Tamba project, which has recently got a whole lot of new people onto our share registry. The uh, This all started when we discovered a 4.3% uh, rock chip earlier in the year, and we found some multiple high-grade other rock chips. So... We then made the decision to have a look and see what's underneath them. And uh, what's interesting too uh, for investors about King Tamba, what may be interesting is that it certainly appears that King Tamba was a historic uh, tantalum mine. And um, it's we, from the samples we've taken, it's, you know, it's riddled with uh, lithium, cesium, you know, niobium, tantalum, uh, tin, gallium, uh, rubidium, and uh, it certainly seems to be a pathfinder, historic tantalum mines, to, uh, to, to lithium. For, for example, you've got core exploration uh, as a recent example, uh, wildcat uh, resources as another recent example, and, of course, green bushes more historically. So uh, these, um, Gregato has got a market cap of 17 mil, and and uh, wildcat and the uh, and and CXO, the two companies I've mentioned, have market caps. Uh, I believe last time I looked at up to seven or above seven hundred mil. Uh, next slide, please. So, if we thought, let's do some drilling underneath these high grade rock chips, and what we intersected was uh, was was um. We, 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 it was pretty thick, uh, pretty thick pegmatites. So we did a total of 1,800 metres or so across 16 holes, and 13 of the 16 holes intersected pegs and with pretty consistent intersections. And, and one of particular, this is down to 70 metres, was um, up 39 uh, metres in, in width. So looking pretty interesting. And uh, that's only... The, the drilling we did is, is only an absolute fraction of this three kilometre LCD corridor that we've already delineated via uh, um, a soil sampling. And some of the samples we've taken uh, have um, fl- have uh, blowed under the UV light. And 
we're expecting those samples back with proper analysis, hopefully before Christmas, uh, touch wood. Uh, next, uh, please, next slide. So this is a close-up of what we're talking about at King Tamba. The uh, high-grade rock chips were taken from the prospects of MGM, Wilsons and Loder, and you can see there on that dotted line but below, it's a fairly consistent um, thick pegmatite that's open to the southeast. Uh, and those rock chips, are a lot of them were over 2%, up to a lot of them were over 3%, and uh, the highest one was at Wilson's, which was 43 uh, Next slide, uh, please. Thank you. Now, what we see, I, don't, I hope you guys can see this, but this uh, red dotted line uh, provides the this three kilometer uh, corridor of uh, of of soil mineralization, and within that in that black uh, dotted line is about a 0.5 to 1.3 uh, kilometer um, high grade uh, yoke, if you like. And um, if, if you can see that that dotted green line there in the shape of a smile. That was where we did that last drilling. So we've we've, um, we've hardly touched the surface here of this massive uh, system that what, that our main uh, exploration geologist has said that it's got potential for uh, the systems big enough to potentially be of uh, biblical proportions. Um, uh, next slide, please. Now, Mount Clare, uh, we'll, we'll just briefly go over this. Um, again, we've uh, got good metallurgy on it. It's 101 million, million tonnes. Um, it's got a big exploration target of uh, nearly uh, half a billion tonnes. And uh, it's it's one of the biggest clay-hosted rare earth projects in Australia. And not only that, it it's where it is situated, unlike our, uh, unlike our clay-hosted rare earth peers, or most of them, is uh, it's not subject to the ground's not subject to intensive farming. They, they, they're not growing anything on it. It's like a uh, like a Martian meadow. Uh, next, please. What's interesting at Mount Clare recently, we've we uh, we've been able to enter an area where we were unable to enter before. This is the uh, dew area. We cut a road into it and we sent out our world-class exploration team. And uh, now we found uh, widespread pegmatites up there as well, uh, with uh, one in particular outcrop of uh, 40 metres wide and a strike greater than 200 metres, um, kind of dwarfing our, uh, our exploration geologist. So there's certainly potential for, uh, you know, for, for goodies up there as well. Uh, next, thanks. Mount Clare, to put it in perspective, uh, we've put some neighbours in this map. Uh, you know, the, the likes of, um, you know, Deltas up there in the vicinity, um, Hastings, Kingfisher. Uh, you can see them on the uh, on the slide. It's, you know, a lot of them are finding, uh, you know, um, carbonatites, uh, primary carbonatites for the rare earths and also a whole bunch of uh, lithium. With, uh, with really high market caps compared to Krakatoa. Uh, and we've just recently taken about over a thousand uh, soil and rock chip samples. They're in the lab and uh, we're waiting on those assays to come back. Next, please. Thanks, uh, thanks very much. Thank you, Colin. Uh, plenty of questions for you, Colin. Let's start uh, with the first one. Um, obviously, been a huge uh, couple of weeks uh, for for the company. What are the next plans at King Tamba following these strong initial results? Yes, well, I, I think that's a fairly good question. There, what we are doing at the moment is we are com uh, contemplating a phase two drill campaign. Given the fact that we've only <laughs> we've only just touched the surface, so to speak, we've only just drilled a sliver of um, of that high grade. Uh, of those high grade um, soil samples. Now, what's important for investors to note as well regarding those soil samples, the uh, exploration team are adamant that they haven't been transported. It's elevated, they're too consistent, 
And so, you know, these high, and they are high grade for soils uh, across the board, and for lithium included, um, they haven't been transported. So, I mean, they've got to come from somewhere and it's, it's not from the sky. So um, <laughs> that's what we're planning to do, uh, potentially. We're, and, uh, uh, mm, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. And how, mu- and how much larger can this discovery along this strike be? Ah, uh, well, it's with it's a three kilometer corridor, and it's a it's a one point three by five hundred uh, high grade soil zone. So it's uh, you know it's it's got unimaginable scale, no yeah. doubt about it. Yeah, got you. And you touched on this earlier. What do you what do you think makes historic Tantalum mines so perspective for lithium discoveries? I guess just where this Tantalum is. There's um, usually, or it appears, is usually lithium. Um, I mean, lithium in the past wasn't a was 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 not something that was deemed to be of any value. So the tantalum was, and uh, they seem to be associated. Uh, LT um, LCT systems, right? Lithium cesium uh, tantalum. Yep. And yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. You only conducted drilling on twenty percent of the uh, the Mount Clearer area. When will you commence the next campaign? Yeah, well, that's a that's a good question. First of all, we we'll wait until all those soil and uh, rock chip samples are, are processed from the lab, and then we will uh, work out a plan. And uh, last one here for you, Colin. Uh, can you speak to the significance of the extraction uh, with the, the with the with the rare earths and why close, close clay hosted deposits like me, my, 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 like Mount Clare uh, benefit you? Well, well, in general, the good thing about clay-hosted rare earths is that you you often don't need to grind. You don't you certainly don't need to blast. You don't have to um, crush. You know, there's no primary, secondary, tertiary crush. There's no conveyor belts. None of that. So um, the, the 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 capex is is minute compared to a hard rock uh, system, and the opex is. Is also uh, much much uh, much lower as well. Uh, it, you you don't have the tailings dam issues either because you process it and then stick it back into the uh, into where you, t- you got it from. Uh, the the only yeah so it's there's a heap of a heap of benefits. It's it's lower grade but you can push it through hard. Well, uh, uh, Colin, many thanks for your your, your time to, today. Clearly, a huge amount going on for uh, uh, Krakatoa. We were watching the story incredibly closely. It's great to see that uh, a lot more interest has come into the, uh, the stock over the last few weeks. And uh, we wish you the best for the best of the future. Thank you. Thanks very much, Paul. It's a pleasure being here. <laughs>